talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, either I respect that. If she be down the ride, no, I bet that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How you doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Are you clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling iry today? Let's talk. No, you can't sit with us. What does that even mean, Jay? Nothing, nothing, nothing. All right. You guys like that, uh... Young lady that called me the other day. I don't even know if she's young or not. Yeah, that was um interesting. Interesting. We got a lot of stuff going on at this post office, man. And, you know, I try to joke a little bit, but mental health issues are real. They are. They are. And it, it doesn't need to be that way. It really doesn't need to be that way. We all have personal things going on. But at the end of the day, you know... When you go to work and you look at somebody and you make an assumption that they just might be, you know, weird or whatever, just know that things weigh on the natural human being, regardless of how powerful you look at them. Wow, that lady, she walks up right and she always carries her head high. Just you just never know what she could possibly be dealing with, because at any given moment, your character towards that person can trigger that person. Don't ever forget that. That was my little input. I wanted to talk. And sometime this week, I'm going to get a hold of, uh, yeah, the person that spoke to, you know, I spoke about in the video uh, with the rural carriers and them decertifying the union. Uh, she reached out to me. I'm, a, you know what? I don't know if it was a she or he person reached out to me and they're going to give me some more information about that. And I'm going to definitely pass that out to you guys as well. If you don't know, just go back a couple, you know, videos and you'll see what I'm talking about. But they're going to, they reached out. We're going to have a conversation later today. All right. Somebody wrote me an article and I felt like I was going to read it. So if you don't want to hear then write me an article, seem like an article, they wrote me um, an email and specifically asked for me to read this. And this is what you guys do. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm anytime you want me to share something and I feel like it's worth it. I'm going to do that. Uh, hi, Jay. I was wondering if you could share my story as I cannot find anyone to help and don't know what avenues are available to resource to resolve my issues. I have more documentation if interested. This is just a summary less July to present of my employment with the United States Postal Service. Now, I'm gonna read this pretty choppy because it is really early, contrary to what you guys see, it's very early to me. And it may be choppy, and this is it. And I will not use the person's name. <clears throat> All right, the name of this actual story is Management Discretion, what it actually means. All right, there's a lot of words to this. Again, bear with me. Oof. How much should one endure before they choose? Mm. We're going to start over because Jay chopping it up already. Get, get your glasses. I'm not wearing pants right now. How much should one endure before those with the power to influence your future decide you have atoned for your purposed sins? purported sins. Please allow me to tell you my story. I've worked for the United States Postal Service as a rural carrier for nearly seven and a half years. I used to love my job. Never would I have imagined that there would be a day that would come that I would be reading a document which used the terms unreliable or unsatisfactory when referencing to my work ethic. Despite Disparity isn't even a bold enough word to describe the course of events that began a little over a year ago. And they really did this. So y'all sit back, get your popcorn. Being forced into the reality that is now my life. I've been condemned without due process, without fair investigation in the facts. I am consumed not in the name of justice or to be right. I am honestly unnerved to my core that my management team, who I used to have a great deal of respect for, can either watch what's happening or be the one dispensing the injustice. 
it has become so deliberate that even those that believe the narrative presented in my absence have abandoned that position. It is not easy to twist facts when a single employee is continuously being used to trying to set up a precedent openly on the workroom floor, almost as though to prove if we don't comply, no matter what the policy is ignored, what laws are broken, or even how unethical the demand be, this is the result. I hope some supervisors will listen to this because this is an employee reaching out for help. And this is how supervisors treat them. I see this. This all began such and such. I was on my way to work when the seventh vehicle that I purchased for the for my job broke down. I had just brought the vehicle three months prior. I called a co-worker to pick me up to go to work and informed my supervisor of the situation. There was an extra vehicle they were going to allow me to use. For some unknown reason, my union steward went out the way to approach the acting supervisors who aren't well acquainted with our contract on the rural side and told them I wasn't allowed to use a government vehicle on my personal vehicle route. My supervisor approached me to inform me that I couldn't use my vehicle per my union steward. That sounds like a steward screwing with you right now. A bloody play, I hate to. Because we have rural carriers at a couple of my stations and they use government vehicles. I tried to provide the article number in our contract which states the decision was at management discretion and that my union steward was not management. I know that's right. Union stewards, you ain't management. You damn near don't do your way. Mm. However, for a love of fear of a possible grievance, my supervisor erred on the side of the caution. I filed a grievance on this matter because just a month prior, my co-worker used a government vehicle. I guess that's what they were saying. For two weeks while her vehicle was in a shop. While discussing the grievance with the new postmaster, he informed me that he was allowed that he wouldn't allow this practice to continue. I acknowledge that matter was at his discretion, but told him that if he makes a decision that affects past practices, he would have to have a service talk to inform everyone. Mm -hmm. That's right. I also cautioned him to consider the negative impact on this decision would have on a management as well. When you work six days a week, you can't exactly drop your vehicle off at a shop. My postmaster didn't wish to settle the grievance at step one. Consider the grievance was a I filing, I was filing disputes information my steward portrayed to management. I made several phone calls from my district representative all the way up to the union president requesting someone else to represent this grievance because in my, in my opinion, my steward fighting a grievance, hmm, which was the result of her inserting herself and presenting misinformation was a conflict of interest. True. My district representatives told me that my steward was a wonderful steward and I needed to file an EEO against management. This really ain't management right now. I don't think this is management. The union president said she had no idea where I read the use of government vehicles on that she didn't have a copy of her contract with her, even though I called her union office phone number. That's funny. She didn't have a copy of the contract. This is the RCA union, the rural carrier union. You didn't have a copy of the contract, but you're at your office. <laughs> uh, I was disgruntled and I decided I did not wish to pursue the grievance considering management did, did intend to allow me to use the vehicle and had it not been for my steward. They were gonna let her use the vehicle, but then the steward injected themselves. So that's some shit right there. Boy, I elected not to consent to the grievance moving forward. However, my steward stated it was not too late for that, and it wasn't in my decision anymore. She won the grievance and stipulated other rules in her own interest. See? That's what I'm talking about, boy. Ooh. Oh, this is getting me angry. The settlement was a cease and desist on this past practice, which led to dozens of grievances over the next several months, namely because a week after the settlement, the postmaster personally handed government key vehicle keys to another carrier after her vehicle broke down. 
In another situation a short time later, management couldn't get anyone to finish a route and the steward suggested letting a substitute use a government vehicle on personal vehicle route. Unfortunately, I carried the blame for the inconvenience in the eyes of management. Hmm, that's funny. And my coworkers, I believe the tension would soon dissipate soon enough. And you got a couple books here. So I'm not really going to go through all of this, but I can see where this is going. Uh, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to go to the end. We know we're starting this off. Management's discretion demonstrates the effects of an imbalanced distribution of power, which cannot be conquered. Over the last 10 months, management has acknowledged that requested leave had been repeatedly denied without cause. They acknowledged that leave slips were thrown away too. They acknowledge that on two occasions, I did not receive a paycheck. They acknowledge that I voluntarily worked five of my scheduled days off, three of which I didn't get paid for. They acknowledge that on five occasions, I voluntarily assisted. Okay, so basically, I don't really want to get into all the other stuff, but I'm going to get to the root of this because we don't want to draw this out. This is a very long story. Um, management's discretion. Management does have the discretion and they have over the power. Unfortunately, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Now, if your union is there to help you, at the end of the day, the union's supposed to be there to help you in any situation, in any situation, right? That's what they do. They help the people that are bad. They're supposed to help the people that are good. This was clearly a situation where um, the person uh, vehicle broke down and it wasn't going to be an inconvenience to anyone else if this person used the government vehicle. The only person that had an issue with it was the union shop steward. Now, would that have caused the domino effect somewhere down the line? I don't see that. Is that a no, never, never, never? It can't be because, like I said, here in my location, a majority of our uh, rural carriers and RCAs use government vehicles. So this is where the imbalance between one contract and another contract lays. If one contract says this, then all the contracts should be the same. But if one contract here is going to say, no, they can't use it, then all of them need to say the same exact thing. If we can't get them to all agree with each other, then why do we have a union? It's supposed to be union one uni one but it clearly isn't that way they have the mous well this area can use a government vehicle but this one cannot they just they they just adjust the pay that's all it is so whoever this union steward was that did this was clearly a bloody player hater and um it really needs to be addressed but what do you guys think about this uh half the story because i can't go through the whole thing you know let me know your opinion in the um comments below and uh any guys any one of you guys that have issues or i'm not gonna say issues or your own story you know my email is always in the video description this is jh we'll chat unexpected expenses stressing you out get the money you need now with loans for feds a program designed specifically for federal employees bad credit is not a problem application is fast and easy with same day approvals Apply now.